Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss bus and memory transfer. Now we had discussed registers in the previous session. What are registers? Now in our computer, there are many registers. So we need to connect each of registers with individual registers such that the information transfer occurs between these registers. So for that case, we require some common bus system. So we need to perform wirings between the registers. Say for example, we are having two registers, register A and register B each of four bits. Now we want to transfer the data between these two registers. We need to make the line wirings. So this is how we had done. But consider we add one more register to this system that is register C. And we need to transfer among register A and C and B and C. So we need to do the wirings between all these registers. So register A to register C and register B to also register C. So now you can see by adding one only one register, you can see the wiring between these register is becoming complex. Now consider we add one more register, register D. Now this register D needs to be connected with all these three more registers. So you can imagine how complexity increases. So for that we are having one solution that is common bus system. Now over here we are taking example for four registers only, register A, B, C and D. Now in that case, register A, B, C, D, we have taken four registers of four bits. So for designing this system, we require four multiplexers. Now why four multiplexer? We'll discuss it at the end. Now four multiplexers we have taken of size four cross one. Now you have studied the concept of multiplexer in digital electronics. Multiplexers of size four cross one means we are having four inputs one output and two select lines. So now for designing this, for connecting each and every component of the multiplexer, we require four inputs for all these multiplexers. So from where they will be connected. Now let's see one by one. Now as you can see, the register D, one line from register D that is bit 3 is connected to multiplexer 3's third line. Now the connection is very important. D register is connected onto the third line of this multiplexer. You can see this. The third line is connected to the line 3 of multiplexer 3. Now line 2 of this multiplexer, line 2 of this multiplexer is connected to the third bit of register C. Line 1 is connected to the third bit of register B and line 0 is connected to the third bit of register A. So all individual registers third bit are connected to the MUX 3's input. As you can see 0 is A, 1 is B, 2 is C and 3 is D. Now similarly all rest bits are connected to rest of the multiplexers. So you can see the rest of the bits from register D that is 0, 1, 2 are connected to this multiplexer remaining multiplexers are connected with D at input line 3. So now you should be very much clear that line 2 of all the remaining multiplexers will be connected with line C. Line 1 would be connected with B and line 0 would be connected with A. Now to not make this circuit complex, wiring complex, we are just denoting it by means of the symbols. So the inputs are ready for this multiplexers. Now the select lines. So two select lines S1 and S0 all are connected. All the multiplexers are connected with the same line S1 and S0. And we are having four output which goes to a four line common bus. So this is what is the hardware arrangement for this particular common bus. But we need to understand the working of this circuit, how it will work. Let's see. Starting with, say for example, I take the S1 and S0 input to be 0, 0. So what happens now? As the select lines are 0, 0, the 
input from zeroth line would be the output for our case because multiplexer we have studied the working of multiplexer based on the select line input line would be selected and it would be transferred to the output line so over here s1 and s0 are 0 0 respectively so our zeroth line would be selected so onto the zeroth line of all the multiplexers you can see a input is connected a0 a1 a2 and a3 so we would be getting a0 a1 a2 and a3 over here as an input to the multiplexers and they will be our output so the output is a0 a1 a2 and a3 so what we have observed the observation is that when we select s1 and s0 to be 00, 0 the register a is selected and the content of a register is put onto the common line bus now similarly by changing the select lines we can get different registers let's see the function table for the same so as you can see if s1 s0 is 0 1 then register b is selected s1 and s0 are 1 0 respectively register c is selected and if both are 1 then register d is selected this is what is about 4 registers of size 4 bits each so now in this case we'll discuss in general say for example we are having k registers of n bits which produces n line common bus so now we need to discuss how many number of multiplexers we require and what size of each multiplexer should be so in that case the number of multiplexers needed to construct the bus is equals to the number of bits of each register and the size of this multiplexer is dependent on the number of registers repeating it again the number of multiplexers to construct the system is dependent on the number of bits of a register and the size of each multiplexer is dependent on the number of registers so for example if we want to design a common bus for for eight registers of 16 bits then we require 16 multiplexers of size 8 cross 1 because number of multiplexers are 16 because the registers size is 16 bits and the size of the multiplexer is 8 cross 1 because there are 8 multiplexers in the system now as the multiplexer is of size 8 cross 1 so we require the select lines to be 3 because 2 raised to 3 so this is how a common bus system for k registers of size n bits we can design so this is what is a common bus system